Today we're going to be doing Krypton level 5 to level 6. Uh, in the last episode we did a Vignier polyalphabetic cipher uh, with a known key length, but in this time we're going to be doing a polyalphabetic cipher with a key length that is unknown. So that's going to be that added level of difficulty that we're going to have to peel back in order to be able to decode our message and our password to the next level. So let's go ahead and hop into our shell here and go into our Krypton, Krypton 5 directory and look at what we have. So we have three found files, just like we did last time, as well as the Krypton 6 message that we need to decode, and then the readme, which should be the same as the website. That's correct. Okay. So how are we going to break down these messages without knowing the key? So how we did it last time is we knew the key. So we were able to take each letter uh, of the same key length and break it down into a monoalphabetic cipher where we could just do frequency analysis again and decode our message. But without knowing the key length, that becomes impossible, and we have to do some kind of extra help to be able to determine the key length so we can kind of repeat the process that we did in the last episode. So how are we going to go about finding out the length of the key just based off ciphertext that we have? So we have three ciphertext messages, found one, found two, and found three. All looks like about the same length. So we need to be able to determine a certain key length. So of course, I have a script that I've made in Python, and I just want to share you share with you guys the background of why the script works. So what the script is, and I'll pull it on the screen now so you can kind of look at it while I'm going over what it does. Uh, what the script does is, the whole, the whole principle behind it is that if you see repeated sequences, so what we're going to do is we're going to look through the ciphertext and look for repeated sequences. If you can find repeated sequences, and this stumped me for a little while, if you can find repeated sequences that are a certain amount of space apart in the message, so for example, like uh, seven characters apart, or 10 characters apart, or something like that, then any kind of factors of that space apart, so for example, if it was 10 spaces apart, then two and five would be factors of that, as well as 10 itself, um, would be possible key lengths. Because if a key is a certain length, then it's going to be able to, you're going to be able to find eventually repeated sequences throughout the message. So what we're going to do is we're going to scan our text file for repeated sequences. We're going to find where those sequences that are repeating and how far apart they are. And then we'll get, we're going to add that to a total of the amount of spaces apart and all the factors of that number. So say, say we find two sequences that are alike, that are 45 spaces apart. Then we'll add 5, 3, 15, and 9 as the factors um, to the, that could be possible keys that, would we, that we'd see that sequence repeating. And of course there's coincidences where the key length might not be a certain thing, but it still repeats anyway. But we're going to do this over the entire file, and eventually what we may find is that some key lengths uh, repeat more than others. You'll see that uh, certain sequences repeat more than others. So for example, uh, six spaces apart might be more frequent to, to find in the key than others. And we're going to look at this frequency, uh, I guess you could call it frequency analysis of the repeated sequences, and we'll see if we can kind of determine a guess, a statistically uh, significant guess, as to what our key length might be, and then try to use that as a guess. So let's go ahead and break down what this script does. So we're going to open our file, and then what we're going to do is we're going to read in the lines, and we're going to take a length of three all the way up to five, that's going to be our sequence lengths. So three is going to be the lowest sequence lengths that we're going to look at. So we're going to look at trigrams all the way up to, I guess that would be a tetragram. Um, that might be, that might be four. I don't know, but all, all the way up to five letter sequences uh, or a pentagram. That might be what it is. Um, so then we're going to go line by line, and we're going to. This is a. So this is a. <laughs> this is a two nested for loops here. So this this runtime is going to be O of n squared, which is pretty bad. I kind of just whipped this up out of. Um, you know, pretty quickly, this can be very much improved upon in terms of its performance and memory, uh, but it, that wasn't really the purpose. It, it gets the job done. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to go line by line, and it's going to find a repeated sequence. So it's going to store the sequence in this variable i, and then it's going to go through from that sequence j and store. And if it if it finds or it's going to find the, it's using i as an index and j as an index. It's going to take Q and store uh, a sequence, and then if it finds that sequence again, it's going to store it in R. And then all it's going to do is it's going to append in this rep sequence spaces um, the difference between the, the space J and the space I. So that's going to be the, the spaces apart between the two texts of uh, repeating sequences. Um, and then it's going to take all the factors from 1 to 20. We're assuming the key length is less than 20. Um, and then add that into a tally. 
and then eventually the number from 1 to 20 with the most tallies will be our probable key length. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. All it needs is a, is a file name. So we'll go ahead and try to uh, SCP this file onto our machine just like we've done before. So let's do uh, keylength.py and then put this onto krypton, oops, krypton5 at krypton.labs.overthewire.org at, ooh, let's make our TMP uh, first. So mk temp tac d and that's gonna be our TMP directory. And we'll go ahead and CD into that. And then we will use that directory to SCP our files into. And then we'll enter the password from the last episode. If you haven't go watch that, go ahead and do that. Um, and then we'll go back over and there's our key length. And we're also gonna SCP all of the other files that we use. So the Vineyard decoder, the Vineyard shift, and the frequency analysis script. So we'll go ahead and do that off camera. Okay, so we have all of the files that we need. Um, to be able to solve this level. So the, the only difference is that we're going to be using this key length to determine the key, uh, to, or determine the, a probable key length. We're going to be using our veneer shift like we did last time to determine each uh, letter by letter of the key. Uh, we're going to be using frequency analysis uh, in, in aid with that. And then finally, once we have a, a key that we suspect to be the key, we're going to be using our veneer decoder to decode that plain text, or the ciphertext message into a plain text. So let's go ahead and run our key length. Uh, script. So let's go key length and we'll specify the file name is going to be slash krypton slash krypton5. Uh, I spelled krypton wrong. It's krypton slash krypton5 slash found1. And let's see what it returns. So it's O of n squared, so it's going to kind of take just a second. So we now have these percentages of what the key length probability might be based on how many times the factors, uh, based on how many times the spaces were factors of these. Um, we're multiples of these numbers. So it looks like six, it, it, you kind of have to ignore these one, two, three, because one, two, three are factors of so many numbers. But once you get into these higher areas like six, and we kind of see nine here is a little bit higher, these might be our suspected key lengths. So we'll keep this in mind and we'll do this on found two now. And we probably will see the same pattern. Yep, so six is a little bit higher, nine's up there as well. Um, we can see 18 here, which makes sense because it's both a, a multiple of, of nine and six. Um, let's see, found three just for the, for kicks here. And yes, we see the same kind of pattern here. Um, so just to save some time, I ran this on six first because my script was putting that six was the highest percentage chance here. Um, and six was not the key length. Um, so I did that whole process to, on, on six, but it didn't work. So we did, I did find that the key length was nine. So that, that was my second guess, so after six didn't work, I went on and tried nine, and that one did seem to work. So let's go ahead and do that with nine in mind. Uh, if this is your first go through, you might uh, be inclined to say six, and that's, that's totally fine. So let's say, um, let's do exactly what we did in the last episode. So let's go ahead and do our veneer shift on our found files. So uh, Python three veneer shift, and then we specify that slash krypton slash krypton five, uh, slash found one, and then our key length is going to be nine, and our shift is going to be zero, and we're going to save that to shift uh, or found one underscore shift zero, and let's go ahead and cat that, and there we go. So now this is every ninth letter, starting from the zeroth letter, or the, the first letter rather, of the krypton found one file. Let's go ahead just for kicks to do it to the found2 file as well, and we'll change this to found2 shift0, and we'll change this up here. And let's go ahead and cat that out, so cat found2 shift0, and that's going to give us... So let's go ahead and do our frequency analysis on this, so we'll do python3 freakanalysis.py on the found1 underscore shift0, and then we will do a group size of 1, and we can see that b is going to be our most common, followed by c and o. And then let's do it on our shift, or found two shift one, or found two shift zero, second file that we generated. And it looks like O is the most common in this one, and B is not even close. So we have some kind of conflict here. We're not 100% sure what E is going to map to, being that it's the most common. So just for sake of clarity, let's go ahead and run that veneer shift again on, or we can probably just go up here, veneer shift on the found three file as well, just so we're sure what's the most common letter here for that key mapping. And let's go ahead and do our frequency analysis on found three, see what the most common letter is. 
and it's going to be C. So it looks like C, O, and I think B's down here again, so it's probably just between C and O. O is the most common one in this one, and C is the most common one in this one. So let's try it on O first, and then we will try it on C if that doesn't end up working. So let's do our, uh, let's see, let's, let's see if, uh, let's, pull, let's pull up our uh, alphabet here. So if it's O, then O is going to map to 14, and E is going to map to 4. So just like in the last episode, we're going to do the ciphertext minus the plain text, uh, which is going to give us our key. So 14 minus 4 is 10, which is this K here. So let's write down K. And if it's C, let's, let's do it for both. So if it's C, C is going to be 2, and 2 minus 4 is going to be negative 2. So in that case, we can just do modulus with, uh, with 26. If it's, a, if it's a negative number, uh, if you don't know that off the top of your head, you can fire up a Python script and do negative 2 mod uh, 26. And that gives us 24, which maps to y. So let's keep track of both here. So I'm going to go ahead and go through all of the shifts here from 0 to 8. I'm sure you can automate this in some kind of, I would probably do this in a bash script. Um, but do this on your own and see what you can come up with if C is mapping from E or K is mapping from E. And do this with all the all the shifts. Uh, if you're confused on what's going on and you haven't seen the last episode, that's going to have most of the explanation. I'm kind of going a little bit quickly because we've already done this process in the last uh, in the last episode. This is just a big repeat uh, repeat of it. So I will see you when I've done all eight shifts. Okay. So after after doing the frequency analysis and the veneer shift um, on all eight of the shifts, we've now come up with a key of length nine, and it looks like it, it's going to be key length. If you weren't able to get that. Um, Ask away in the comments what you're having trouble on. I'm just repeating exactly what I did in the first step to get the letter K. Um, and I'm just doing that through all three or all eight of the shifts. So let's see. So now what we want to do is we want to take this key, this potential key, and use the decoder script to decode our plain text or our ciphertext message that we have in our Krypton file. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's do Python 3, uh, vineyard decoder.py. We're going to specify the file name, so slash krypton, slash krypton5, and slash krypton should be 6, yep. And then for our decoder, our key is key length. And then let's see what we get. So decoding, and then it looks like our password is random in all caps. So let's go ahead and try that out. And SSH, tech P, or we I probably have it saved here, yep. 6 and random in all caps. And there we go. So that is how we did the polyalphabetic cipher with a unknown key length. So essentially just going through that process again, we used a frequency analysis or a sequence analysis tool to be able to get a probable key length. Um, we tried out the most, the, the top hits for that and we repeated that shifting uh, frequency into a monoalphabetic cipher. We did frequency analysis on each of the shifts and then we finally came up with a probable key and used a decoder. Um, so next we'll be going on to probably uh, the hardest level, which is the last level here, uh, in the next episode. Thanks for watching.